back to the channel everybody hope you guys are having an awesome day I've gotten a few comments in the past about how the bike does on freeway during freeway speeds um, and I kind of wanted to uh, make, make a video on how that handles on the freeway it's a small bike remember 313 cc motor it's got like 34 horsepower and um, yeah it's a small adventure bike want to go over some of the highlights of it and some of the uh, downsides to it on the freeway. So, uh, downside, it doesn't have a whole lot of passing power. Right now I'm in fifth gear, I'm sitting at 6,000 RPMs and watch full throttle. Not a whole lot of get up and go to it. So that is a, that's a major downside when you're on the freeway. It's a major downside when you're trying to navigate traffic um, and all that kind of stuff. It's just not, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of get up and go and so that's kind of a you know that's definitely a check mark against it it's not a deal breaker though you know I mean I suppose it, you would need that kind of power um, if you're trying to get out of a hairy situation uh, but at the same time maybe instead of getting putting yourself into that sticky situation you you fall back a little bit you give you uh, you know your allowable space in front of you enough of a cushion to stop swerve react whatever it is and uh, maybe you won't end up in a situation where you're going to need a whole bunch of power now i'm not saying that that completely takes away from uh, the need for that kind of power but i am saying that maybe just drive a little or ride a little better a little smarter and uh, you might be able to avoid some more common mistakes like that um, so yeah power on the freeway is definitely number one i will say that it does get up to speed you can cruise at this or with this bike at around 70 to 75 miles an hour right now i'm like i don't know 57 uh, we got some traffic so it's hard to show you that um, but i will say as soon as you get around 75 ish um, it it's definitely not the most stable in the world and that and when i say that i mean the handlebars i mean just a smallest little bump in them and the front end just wants to wobble a lot and it's not like you know a minor wobble it like it wants to get like speed wobble and that's a terrible feeling so right now you can see I just tried to shift up again I'm in sixth this bike would definitely benefit from taller gears or a uh, larger front sprocket um, like it's the 17 tooth one which I will eventually upgrade I haven't done that yet so this is still riding on stock everything just so you know um, but the gears are very short it likes to ride in the high rpms which isn't a huge deal however um, it would just be nicer to not hear it hear the engine at its very top end um, but just to give you some context, I am six foot two, I'm 230 pounds, and cruising on this bike probably would not be the most comfortable thing, but it definitely is not impossible, and I definitely wouldn't turn my head away from it, um, or my nose up to it, because I'm pretty sure I could probably cruise on this for a few hours on the freeway. It would just get uncomfortable because I feel cramped on the bike. Um, you can get a taller seat for it. I know Seat Com Concepts makes them. Uh, the tall version of it but then you're looking at if you get a taller seat you got to get taller handlebar risers so you can have your handle or your bars closer to you and there's so there's adjustments you have to make um, I'm just riding the stock seat right now so I can't really speak much on seat concepts I will be able to here in the near future um, I should be installing one here soon so I'll go ahead and I'll do a review video on that and a ride video as well so you guys can uh, get my opinion on it um, anyways so yeah as you can see we're at 70 70 miles an hour 74 miles an hour and it does pretty good I'm sure you can hear the motor right now it's revving at 7,000 rpms and uh, yeah it doesn't really climb very fast in speed it does decent but not like super great either so um, and I'm not sure how good it is for the motor to keep it at that high of RPMs for that long because you know you are running it hot and I mean with that this small of a motor that high of RPMs I know the motor is built for it but I'm not sure how how it's built as far as how long you can run those RPMs so I did uh, there was a Facebook post in a, in a 310 GS group that I'm that I'm in some guy blew his motor like 900 or 300 miles into his 
1200 mile road trip or something like that. Anyways, I'm not sure if that was involved with how long you were, you know, how high the RPMs were, or maybe that was just bad uh, maintenance on your bike. I don't, I don't really know the, the circumstances, but running anything that high for that long, definitely good for the, uh, the engine. So when I'm on the freeway and I'm cruising with this thing, I usually like to keep it around 70, 70 miles an hour, 65, 70. I might venture up into the high or mid 70s, but I definitely won't go much above 75. Um, simply because I just don't feel like it is meant to do that for long periods of time. So, but as you guys can see, it does pretty good on the freeway. It's not, it's not crazy. It's a small bike. I don't get pushed around a whole lot by other cars. Um, semis, obviously, they're, you know, giant. They have their own, you know, wind vortex around them. So it's very hard to navigate that because that, that does want to pull you to and from and back and forth and all that kind of stuff. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're on the freeway. Uh, but for everybody that was wondering, is this bike capable on the freeway? 100% it's absolutely capable on the freeway. It's just not as capable as others. And that's fine. It's not a big deal. But for 6,400 bucks, it's pretty good, I'd say. Um, but yeah, 